Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always an honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time in the Word of God with you. And we thank God for each and every one of you, for your time and for your presence. And we are continuing our time of talking about praise. And yesterday we shared with you Psalms, the ninth division, the first through the second verse. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. It is a honor to praise our Father which is in heaven for all of the wonderful things that he has done, that he is doing, and for the things that he shall do. Let me share these encouraging words with you. No matter where you may be, no matter what may be going on in your life, Joy will come again. Here's something I want you to remember. I am the God of the brokenhearted. When the pain of life beats you up, I am your refuge. Hide yourself in me. Come away and rest in me. I am your healer and I am kind. I am merciful and I am good. I love you. And I know how to heal your tender heart. Don't doubt, beloved. Believe in my healing love. Believe in my mercy. Believe in my mighty power. Believe that I am worth trusting. I am the king of glory. I am bigger and more magnificent than you can possibly imagine. Even when you fall or disappoint yourself, I am with you. Rest in my finished work. Open your heart to me. Will you? Will you let me flood you with healing and peace once again? I will lift you up and resuscitate your faith. It's okay to go through seasons of grief and weariness. But after I've strengthened you, take my hand and walk with me back into joy. I will not neglect you. Joy will come this is my promise to you. From the book, I hear his whisper, just wanting to share some encouraging words with each and every one of you on this Thursday, August the 26, 2020. God is a God who can resuscitate your joy, your faith, your love. Trust him. He is the I am that I am. I'll be back in a moment. We thank you for tuning in with The Balance of Life, and we invite you to visit us on our website at www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. Via the website, you have the opportunity to check out our ministry schedule for radio and television also, our monthly newsletter, The Balance of Life, our weekly ap life applications that come from the School of Ministry and Mentoring, our publishing division, as well as our online bookstore. For more details on how you can receive a free copy of our monthly newsletter from The Balance of Life, as well as our weekly life applications, Go to our Keep in Touch page on our website and fill out the information and email us. Request your copy today. Once again, there is no financial obligation. It is totally free to receive our monthly newsletter as well as our weekly life applications. Our website is www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. Once you email us with your request, we will take care of everything else for you. We look forward to hearing from you soon.
As we started out on yesterday, and, and also yesterday was our day for partners in prayer. It was a day of intercessory prayer, and, and that is all day every Tuesday. If you would like to be a part of our partners in prayer, there is no financial obligation. It is a network of support. We use our platform here on radio to support our partners in prayer. If you have a ministry, a upcoming event for your ministry, we make mention of that for free. We also have our Tuesday's Day of Intercessory Prayer. If you have any special prayer requests for yourself, your ministry, your loved ones, email us today at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Once again, our email address is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Request more details on becoming partners in prayer with us. Another great advantage of becoming partners in prayer with the Balance of Life is that we will make mention of your ministry and upcoming events within our newsletters, as well as our magazine, which is printed uh, and made available online. Once again, email us today for more details on becoming partners in prayer with the balance of life. Our email address is the balance of life one at yahoo.com. As you know, on yesterday, we started talking about praise, reasons for praise, the importance of praise and methods of praise. And we're also going to share with you the importance of our worship. So let's dive in. And, you know, growing up, I always liked to see someone who could play the tambourine really well. Every now and then, I try, I attempt, but I don't know how they keep going on and on and on. I guess that's just not my uh, that's not my forte. That's that's not my my area. But I definitely like to uh, hear the sound of the cymbals and from the tambourine. And I love to hear when uh, the anointing. I'm talking about the true anointing. The Holy Spirit uh, begins to uh, play through the vessels, and you can actually hear the sound of praise through the music. It is absolutely awesome. You know, when you don't need any singing and you allow the cymbals and the drums and the different instruments to come together and, and when you can just clap your hands and, oh, it's just an awesome, awesome time to get in the presence of the Lord. And that is one of our methods of praise. Musical praise can be expressed through various instruments, such as the horns, um, the ram's horns, and the trumpets, wind instruments, such as the pipe, string instruments, such as the harp and the lur, and percussion instruments, such as the tamarine and cymbals. Over in Exodus 15 and 20, and also in Psalms 154 through 5, it talks about that. So let's take a look at those two areas of scripture, Exodus 15 and 20. You know, sometimes a song will hit your spirit and you can feel it within you. And I tell you, if you just allow the words, pay attention to the words that we sing and hum and that we listen to. I've been listening to listening to the song All or Nothing or It Ain't Over. Um, let me tell you something. It's not over until God says it's over. Um, those kind of songs are reminding me of the very promises of God. It's not over until he says it's over. Uh, things might look bleak and, and, and you might feel that things are at a standstill. But I know who has the final say. It's not over until he says it's over. Exodus 15 and 20 says, uh, and, and let's let's take a look at this right here. Exodus 15 and 20. 
It says, And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel, which is a tamarine, in her hand, and all the women went out with their with her with timbrels and with dances. This is a time Miriam, who is was also known as a prophetess, uh, because she was prophetically gifted and moved in the spirit of prophecy. Here she led the women of Israel in a spontaneous prophetic chorus, and they danced and they played the tamarine in the presence of the Lord. That right there is just so awesome. Now let me go over to Psalms 150, 4 through 5, and we're talking about praise today. Praise is actually one of your weapons of warfare. It is a spiritual weapon of warfare. So instead of complaining, I need you to get into a place of praise. Instead of whining and crying about the situation, let us get into a place of praise. And let instead of letting negative words come out of our mouth, let's say words of praise give words of adoration and, and just once again praising God for all that he's already done. Thank him for what he's doing right now and praise him for what is to come. There is always a circumstance. There is always a, a moment. There is always a remembrance to bring us to a place of praise. The 150th division of Psalms, the fourth through the fifth verse, says, and, and I'm going to, actually, I'm going to back up to the first. I'm going to read it in, it in its entirety because this is talking about praise. And it says, let everything praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the palstry and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord Praise ye the Lord. So this particular division of Psalms is talking about where we can praise him. It talks about who we're praising. We're praising the Lord our God. We're praising God in his sanctuary. We're praising him in the firmament of his power. We're praising him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. When you want to know how to praise there are scripture texts in the book of psalms as well as other scriptures that teaches us how to praise yesterday we share with you the 100th division of psalms this right here is a song of praise and joy it tells us to make a joyful noise unto the lord and it's talking to all of us it's not just to a sect people, it's to all of us. And let me tell you something, that praise becomes more personal, more intimate when you have a relationship with him. So I want to praise him all the more because I can think about all of the wonderful things that he's done for me. I might not have understood it. Guess what? And some of those things, they hurt in the process. But when I look back over for where he's brought me from, I can truly praise him. When I think about the things he has saved me from, what he's kept me from, the danger seen and unseen, I can praise him. What about you? Think about the goodness that he has shown upon you. The mistakes, the many mistakes that we have made in our lives, in our youth, I don't know about you, I will be 48 this year, and I think about those times that uh, I, I definitely did the nightclub scene in my 20s. Yes, I did. 
I think about those times. I didn't always go to the nightclub with other people. Sometimes I went by myself. And let me tell you something. I know it's by his grace and by his mercy. I arrived at those places and I returned home unharmed. Not everybody can say that. But he covered me. Even in my wrongdoing, that's enough to give him praise. He covered me. He shielded me. He protected me. Let me tell you something. When I did not know where the money was coming from to put food in my cabinets, in my refrigerator, let me tell you something. He provided. When the bills needed to be paid and I had more bills than I had money, he provided. I can praise him for that alone. I have a personal experience with him. I've had an encounter. I've learned him. He has shown himself strong, powerful, and merciful to me. And as we shared with you on yesterday, those are some of the reasons why we praise him. Because we've experienced him. We've experienced him as Jehovah Jireh, our provider, our banner, Jehovah Nisi. We have experienced him as protector. We have experienced him as healer. We have experienced him as love. And the love that he gave his only begotten son for you and I. So that we have an opportunity to spend with him in heaven. That's our eternal life. That's why we praise him. There is this song. And, and once again, think about the song. Think about the melodies that we sing. There is a song and it goes over and it says, that's why I praise him. And it talks about the experiences. The songwriter talks about the experiences that they've had. And so they say, that's why I praise him. See, I could never praise him for you. I'll never understand your praise and you'll never understand mine. You'll never really capture the depth of my praise. And what's so more important is I don't have to be in the midst of anybody else to give him praise. Sometimes in the midnight hour, I think about him and I say, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. Sometimes just sitting all alone, I remember what he's done and I'm grateful that I give him praise. And so praise given unto him has nothing to do with the crowd. Praise will also bring us to a place of humility because we're so grateful. Another way of praise that we can do is when we share of the goodness of what he's done in our lives. For those who have dealt with Addictions, and listen, addiction goes beyond drug and alcohol or pornographic things. Addiction could be shopping and spending money. It could be gambling. It could be gossiping. But when you know that you have been delivered of a thing, let me tell you something, and you share that with someone, that is another way of giving God praise. Because you're giving all of the honor unto him. He deserves it. When you know if it had not been for him, if it had not been for God giving his only begotten son, if it had not been for the son giving of his life, the son had to be obedient to the desires of the father. And when you have experienced that life, changing transition you want to share it with somebody and sometimes we it, it's it's not that we have to say anything but they can see the change in us 
and the conversation opener is, I noticed something about you. There's a change going on with you. There is a glow about you. I, I can't explain it. That is your opportunity. That is the opening of the door to give God praise by making mention of the change that he has made in your life. And so our methods are speaking of him, sharing about him, singing songs. For those who have the gift of speaking in tongues and the gift of singing in tongues, you can praise him that way through the musical instruments. That's how we give him praise. We also show him praise by our obedience, by honoring him, by following the commandments that he has given us. That is how we give him praise, by being obedient. Because if we're disobedient, that doesn't bring him any honor. Let's give him praise today. Let's give him honor. Yesterday, we also talked about the importance of praise. And we share with you four highlights. And I'm going to go over them briefly. We share with you the Old Testament, what the Old Testament used. Such words as Barak, which can also be translated as bless. The word Halil, from which hallelujah, meaning praise the Lord. My father, Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr., always says, Hallelujah. And the word yada, which means give thanks. Also, the importance of praise is very significant. And an example, when the Israelites cross the Red Sea, see, when he has brought you through some stuff, and that thing that you've been dealing with, you no longer have to deal with it. You have been set free. You have been delivered. That circumstance is, is no longer around. It is no longer there to hover over you, to tempt you, to cause you unrest. That's praiseworthy. And so the children of Israel, when they crossed the Red Sea, was essentially a song of praise and thanksgiving to God. That's the instance that we gave concerning Miriam when she grabbed the timbrel and the ladies went after her and she danced prophetically. Moses later commanded the Israelites to praise God for his goodness in giving them the promised land. Another example is the, God, the call to praise God Throughout the New Testament, Jesus himself prays his Father in heaven. And that's Matthews eleven twenty five. Let's go over there and see what that says. Matthews eleven twenty five. If you have just tuned in, you have tuned in to the balance of life. I thank you so very much for joining us today. We are continuing talking about praise, the reasons we praise, the importance of our praise. And methods of praise. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, for his mercy endureth forever. Right now we're going to take a look at Matthew's 11th chapter in the 25th verse. It says, at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. And so Jesus honored the father. He gave him 
thinks. If the Son prays God, the Father, what about us? I'll be back in a moment. Some words of encouragement as we're talking about praise, and praise is one of your spiritual weapons of warfare. Instead of complaining, praise, give thanks, and all things give thanks. Not some things, but in all things give thanks. You know why we should give thanks in all things? Because all things will work together for the good, for them that love him, to them who are called according to his purpose. It's going to work out for your good. Another reason why we should give thanks and we should praise God for all things is because the very work that he started, he is faithful and he is able to complete it. We might not understand the beginning, the middle. We will not understand the process. Sometimes the process will hurt. Sometimes we will cry in the, in the process. During the process, sometimes we are abandoned. We are alone. Uh, and guess what? We are up all night. But it's going to work out for your good. Keep giving God the praise. Know that what he started, he is faithful. He is just to complete. He's able. Here's something else I'd like to share with you today. It's time for your giants to fall. See, this is why praise is a weapon. When you praise, you can shut the mouth of the enemy. You can turn a situation around through your praise because you're no longer focused on the problem. You're focused on the one who is able to do something about it, someone who is able to heal and deliver you. And so take your eyes off of the situation and just give God praise for working it out. Give him praise. He's worthy. Let me share this with you. It's time for your giants to fall. Get ready to be undone, completely and totally undone. Wrecked by my outrageous love that is being released in your life. You will be amazed by what I'm about to do for you. It's time for your giants to fall. I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. I have watched as you stood on shaking legs that felt like they couldn't take another step. Though the enemy works to steal, kill, and destroy, my glory has made you strong. It is time for you to see what I can do. Time for you to cross the threshold of opposition and step into the joy of breakthrough. Now is the time to be joyfully expectant, to allow yourself to be filled with anticipation. Be confident. Not because I do everything the way you think I will, but because you trust me to do the things my way. Anchor yourself in my promises, and soon you'll see the fruit of what I've already put into action behind the scenes. You will be astounded at the victory I am releasing, bewildered by the way I bring things to pass. So don't give up. Praise him at advance. Praise him in advance. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him all day long. Whenever a trial or tribulation hits your spirit, whenever worry hits your spirit, I want you to say, it's going to work out for my good. Lord, I yet praise you. Say hallelujah anyhow. That's another song. It says I learned to say hallelujah anyhow. That says no matter what I'm facing, hallelujah anyhow, which is one of the highest praises. We love you here at the Balance of Life. 
Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way.